There he is. He's still wearing shorts. <laughs> nice job, man. I thought today was going to get you. I thought today was no. going to get you. Uh-uh, not yet. Uh, Bob is still wearing shorts. I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, good morning, friends. Welcome to the show. Mikey, Bob, the 96-1 Kiss Morning Freak Show. Man, it was – we had such a nice week last week, and the weather, for the most part, was really nice this weekend. It's a little rain yesterday, but, man, good weather weekend. Yeah. And, uh, Bob, you know, I, I question whether or not you'd be wearing shorts or pants because I'm wearing pants today. It's supposed to be high in the 50s. I know. Man, you committed to it. You're still wearing the shorts. Yeah, it's pretty cold out right now. A little chilly on the walk. (laughs) A little cold out right now. Do you regret flexing your, uh, you know, your big man statement of once I go shorts, the pants are out? No, because I'll be fine in the afternoon. Okay. Fifties and shorts I can handle. It's just that walk in the morning. Yeah. A little chilly. Yeah, a little chilly out this morning. Uh, It was a... um, an explosive, I guess, Friday for the Penguins as no real surprise. They fired their general manager, Ron Hextall. So you know what we need to do on the show. We will read some Penguins Facebook comments about their moves coming up around 755. Listen, we got to milk all the Penguins we can because they're hot, you know? Oh, penguin it, milk. It's over. So we got to milk the Penguins for all they're worth. Uh, final round maybe for the season of Penguins Facebook comments after they fire Ron Hextall around 755. Also, chance to pay your bills. We'll give you a chance to win $1,000 around 910. Good morning. Let's have a week here. It's Mikey and Bob. 96.1. Kiss. That's what I really want. It is Mikey. It is Bob, the 96.1 Kiss Morning Free Show. I feel like there's just a lot of people getting married right now. You know, it's uh, the start of spring, weather turned nice, Mm -hmm. good wedding season right now. Man, I'm so disappointed I didn't get married right now. (laughs) Why? I'm seriously, (laughs) because, like, me and Jamie got married, like, almost 20 years now, right? Right, yeah. So mad I didn't get married in, like, this day and age, man. Oh. (sighs) Like, when people get married. Uh Uh-huh. There's usually a hashtag for the wedding now. Yeah. Where they combine the two last names. Oh, man. Why couldn't me and Jamie get married now? Oh, man. Such a good one. I've never thought about this. Neither has she. But my wife's last name, uh, maiden name was Schrader, right? Yeah. My last name is Doherty. Schrader Doherty. So make our wedding, Bob. If you're if you're doing the social media for our wedding, what is the hashtag for the Schrader Doherty wedding? Schrader Doherty? Yeah. Who's who's the lead? Who gets the uh, Jamie. Jamie will be the lead here. Shorty? Oh my gosh, the shorty wedding, and I'm so tall, I'm six foot nine. It's the perfect hashtag for a wedding. <laughs> and we blew it by ge- falling in love when we did. It what was right know? there. How great that you blew it all. I know, man. It's right there. <laughs> the Schrader Doherty wedding, the Shorty wedding. When did this pop in your head? Like sometime this weekend on the couch? Yeah, it was like just sitting there. It's like, oh man. Yeah, it was. It was man. Hey, yeah, it was. It was Saturday. It was Saturday. It was Saturday night. It was Saturday night when I texted my wife too because she wasn't home, and I'm just like, honey, we should have oh, got married oh, now oh. because this perfect hashtag for our wedding would have worked. The shorty wedding, get it? Because we're both kind of tall. We're Schrader Doherty, shorty. Oh, man, it's right there. I need, you to get, I need to get remarried just so we can use the hashtag shorty wedding. Were you on medicine or something on Saturday? You're not allowed to ask me about my medicine. That's a HIPAA violation. <laughs> Some deep thinking there. You sure? I wasn't smoking anything. <laughs> HIPAA violation. <laughs> 96.1 Kiss. Mikey and Bob, it is the 96-1 Kiss Morning Freak Show. All right, let's get to this here. We're all going to learn something together right now. Now, it's time to find out why Why the hell is this trending trending with Mikey and Bab. Netflix had some trouble last night, eh? (laughs) What a mess. Uh, Love is Blind, a very popular dating show on Netflix. Uh, The Love is Blind live reunion was supposed to happen last night. On Netflix, Netflix is sort of dipping their toe into live programming right, now. You right, know, yeah. Uh, the Chris Rock stand-up special was a live thing, so they tried to do a live Love Is Blind reunion for their big dating show that they have on Netflix. Um, they were having some technical issues, and I got to be honest, I don't watch Love Is Blind. I tuned into Netflix just to see if it was broken. I'm like, wait a minute, they this broke Netflix. Broke Netflix? Okay, let me 
And then I'm just sitting there watching the screen and it's like, you know, we'll be back soon or technical difficulties. And I'm like, wow, Netflix is broken right now because love is blind. Um, after more than an hour of problems, uh, they announced that they were going to proceed with the reunion. And some viewers were able to see it, see it live on Netflix. But a spokesperson for Netflix said it would be able to watch later on Sunday night. Almost 90 minutes after the Love is Blind reunion was supposed to start on Netflix, Netflix apologized on Twitter, uh, saying to everyone who stayed up late, woke up early, gave up their Sunday afternoon, we are incredibly sorry that the Love is Blind live reunion did not turn out as we had planned. We're filming it now, and we'll have it on Netflix as soon as humanly possible. So they did have the live uh, Love is Blind reunion on Netflix last night. They obviously had some difficulties with the live programming and streaming because, again, I don't even watch this show, and I'm like, all right, let me let me just see. Is it really broken? Or And then I tried to watch it, and it was like, no, they no. Do, they, just let it, they let it sit there, too, and people were just ramping up like, because keep, of the yeah. comments and like, the reaction on yes, Twitter. Yes, yes. The best. People started just, like, memeing the yes. Netflix responses and stuff. And then I'm like, okay, this is the thing now. No, I have to see if it's really not. I wonder what the ratings were for just the we're having technical difficulties right. stream because I feel like a lot of people were just, you know, going to Netflix being like, wait a minute, something broke Netflix? What is happening here? So, even though we don't watch this show, we know it was a big deal because it crashed Netflix yesterday. Uh, Love is Blind finale technical difficulty Facebook comments coming up on the show <laughs> around 9, 10 this morning. That's also when we'll have a chance for you to win $1,000 and try to pay your bills. It's Kiss Morning Freak Show. Mikey and Bob. <laughs> We'll get to everything you need to know from the uh, Coachella performances over the weekend. A Coachella recap around 710 on the Kiss Morning Freak Show. It is Mikey and Bob. You can send us messages through our free iHeartRadio app. All you need to do when you're streaming 961 Kiss or our Mikey and Bob podcast is click that microphone, send us a message. Maybe you'll make the show. Hi, Mikey and Bob. <laughs> oh, boy. Not the ropes. So, I just listened. To the Tupperware face. <laughs> yeah. That's me! Oh, wow. <laughs> what was that laugh? R.I.P. Fat Pat. All right, yeah. Uh, last <laughs> week on the show, you know, there was a report that Tupperware is uh, struggling bad. The plastic container company, very popular in the 80s, 90s, maybe going out of business. So we were reading Tupperware could be going out of business. Facebook comments on the show. Mm -hmm. Hold on, though. Why do you laugh like Goofy? <laughs> oh, that's a goofy laugh right there, right? Like, I was trying to think of what that laugh is. It's a goofy laugh, isn't it? It's right there. It's the, it it is. It's the it not is. the beginning or the end. It's the cool. <laughs> right there. All right. So if you missed it uh, last week on the show, again, Tupperware could be going out of business. Such a weird thing. But uh -huh. This is my favorite Facebook comments <laughs> of the year. Here we go. Where we are going to a very deep, dark place on the internet. It's time for 961 Kiss Facebook comments. Facebook comments after the announcement from Tupperware, the plastic container company popular in the 80s, maybe even the 90s, that they could be going out of business. Anna P. <laughs> what is it? Fat Pat down the block from my aunt used to sell it in the 80s before she passed. <laughs> R.I.P. R.I.P. Fat Pat, man. R.I.P. Fat Pat. Fat Pat from down the block used to have the Tupperware parties <laughs> popping off in the 80s. Oh, damn! Oh, no, don't do it. Fat Pat. Fat Pat's gone! <laughs> Fat Pat is legit gone. Fat Pat, the Tupperware lady left us. She's up at the crossroads. Oh, damn. And I'm going to miss Fat Pat. about Tupperware oh, that bad? possibly going out of business. <laughs> Fat Pat down the block for my aunt in the 80s. She used to sell it before she passed. Oh, God. Diana C. <laughs> what is it? I can't even look at you. Diana C. My brother Frank used to hide his weed in the Tupperware because it would seal airtight. <laughs> Two more. Two more. Bought the weed from Fat Pat down the block. <laughs> <laughs> you think Fat Pat was selling weed too? You know what, man? I, I don't want to do this again, but I, I got to... Oh, damn! There goes Fat Pat, man. Fat Pat's gone! One
one stop shop down the block from my aunt. Weed and where? <laughs> you <laughs> just have cats? Weed. Ann K went to an adult toys and Tupperware party years ago, oh ended up drinking wine coolers, and ended up coming home with a bag full of sexy fun. Okay. <laughs> and then, you know, I have a container here. You can put all your toys in and take them home in the Tupperware. <laughs> I remember I got my uh, first adult toy from After, again, the Tupperware company, plastic containers might be going out of business. Mm -hmm. Mary H. Oh, my God. These Tupperware comments. <laughs> We're going to end with Mary H. here. Last time I drank tequila was at a tuppy party. Ended up Ralphin and Marsh's front lawn bushes. <laughs> All right. Not even a kiss. The Mikey and Bob podcast. I always get naked for a jelly donut. Okay, so if I go get you a jelly donut right now, are you just going to get naked in the studio? No, See, you're just not... thinking, like, what donut's worth getting naked for? No, it's jelly not a donuts. jelly donut. No way. I like jelly donuts. No, no one donut is worth getting naked over. A dozen donuts? I'll show you a little peek for a dozen. <laughs> Stream the Mikey and Bob podcast on iHeartRadio or wherever you get your podcasts. It is Mikey, it is Bob, the 96.1 Kiss Morning Freak Show. We will get to today in Freak Show history coming up next on the show. Um, also, the Penguins, of course, on Friday uh, got rid of their general manager, Ron Hextall. Also, Brian Burke in Hockey Ops uh, was let go. We will read some Penguins Facebook comments around 7.55 here on the Kiss Morning Freak Show. Let's get to this message. This is in yesterday's podcast. I'm away to get coffee, and I just have, like, the best ginger dream. Oh, boy. Could you imagine if the year that the Steelers didn't make the playoffs yeah. and the Penguins didn't make the playoffs yeah. was the year that the Pirates came through for us? All right. Like, I know yeah. I'm dreaming, but hey. Cool. All right, yeah. Nice ginger dream there. Now we're just having fantasies. Let's... <laughs> We're just in fantasy just land. Be happy the Pirates don't completely <laughs> suck so far this year. Uh, Pirates split their series against the Cardinals in St. Louis, a five to four loss in ten innings on Sunday. Pirates now nine and seven on the year. That's actually their best start since an eleven and four start back in uh, 2018. Pirates are in Colorado taking on the Rockies. Ooh, a weird start time, 8:40. Yeah, it's not like a uh, West Coast 10 o'clock start, but it's not the eight, early start. It's a confusing yeah, start right there. 8.40 start time uh, tonight as the Pirates continue on the road in uh, Colorado. All right, it is time for today in Freak Show history, taking us back to a moment in the show that made us laugh, made us smile. Here we go. Today in Freak Show history. Today in Freak Show history. We just got to ask this interesting question. Would you uh, rather uh, wrestle an alligator or wrestle your dad naked? <laughs> all right hold on let's think about this oh god it can't be a full-size gator okay it can't be like a seven or eight foot full-size alligator that alligator can just kill you right wrestling your dad naked will never kill you it's something you're gonna be remembering for the rest of your life it's yes. gonna scar you how do you pick it's a winner in the naked <laughs> dad wrestling though do you have to pin him one minute okay a full-grown alligator can still kill you in a minute, though. Wrestling your dad naked for a minute's not going to kill you. I mean, my, my dad is scrappy, dude. <laughs> Let's say it's not a full-size alligator, but an alligator that's old and big enough to where its teeth will still be able to bite you and right. pierce the skin. So, Like, this alligator does not have the strength or the teeth yet to bite off a limb easily. Am I naked when I'm wrestling an alligator? We'll put if I was naked, there, you know, the gear yeah. could do some damage other places. Damage that your dad's not going to do. Well, your dad's scrappy, I mean, though. 
This is the greatest conversation we may have ever had on our show. I would take the alligator. You know, you gotta take the alligator. Yeah, as long as I'm not naked with the gator. You're allowed to wear wrestling trunks against the alligator, but you're gonna leave the alligator battle. What if like, the gator bl- bloody and scarred though? Like the gator's not a baby gator to where it's playful bites. These I... bites are gonna hurt you, and you're gonna be scarred. Is it in a pond too? Like where I have to get in water with the gator, and the gator has like the advantage of water? Yes. Oh man, it's gonna bite my nipples off. See, here's the thing: why this doesn't work though. Because how are you and your dad going to be forced to naked wrestle for a minute, you know? You're going against an alligator, especially if you're in, like, a pond or water. You're flying all over the place. And, well, you could make... There's parts going everywhere. I've got a gator, Tommy. The loser's you know, got to wrestle the gator, then. You're younger, though, so wouldn't you want to lose on purpose so your poor older dad doesn't have to fight the alligator? There is a lot of issues that come up with the simple question. Would you rather wrestle an alligator or your dad naked? Pin me naked, dad. I'll take on the gator. (laughs) The line? Pin me naked, dad. I'll wrestle the alligator. (laughs) Stand alone has to be one of my favorite lines you've ever (laughs) spoke on the show. Pin me naked, dad. I'll... (laughs) By the way, do you get a title belt for beating your naked dad? I think you got to beat the gator first. The gator comes into the pond wearing the belt. And you get the title belt from him? All right. Just kidding, it's Mikey. It's Bob. The 96.1 Kiss Morning Free Show will do a round of Penguins Facebook comments after they fired general manager Ron Hextall on Friday. Penguins Facebook comments around 7 to 55. Also, we will do a round of Facebook comments after the Love is Blind reunion had some tef- technical difficulties, Netflix trying to do uh, some live reality TV mm. there. Um, over the weekend, it was Coachella 2023. Uh, Bad Bunny was one of the headliners. Blackpink was one of the groups that I think you know got a lot of uh, social traction for their performance. Uh, Bad mm. Bunny... Uh, was the weekend's first headlining act at Coachella this past weekend, made a, uh, you know, it, and Coachella is always, who are you going to bring out? Right, right. right. It's, it's never just, I mean, sometimes it is if you have a big enough artist, but a lot of times it's like, who are you going to bring out? Uh, Bad Bunny brought out Post Malone. They actually had some technical difficulties during their uh, show but um, they actually did like an acoustic performance too. So uh, Bad Bunny bringing out Post Malone at Coachella. Metro Boomin did a set, brought out The Weeknd, The Weeknd making his return because he's headlined Coachella before. Mm-hmm. Also brought out John Legend, Future, 21 Savage, and Diddy. That was part of Metro Boomin's set. Um, during Labyrinth's Saturday night set, uh, they brought out Billie Eilish making her return to Coachella because she's headline. I mean, you have headliners uh-huh. from previous Coachellas just like making surprise appearances during other people's set. That's sort of what Coachella does. So Billie Eilish came out uh, during Labyrinth set. Calvin Harris brought out Ellie Golding. Hey, did you watch Blink-182? I did. I did. It was great, right? It was really good. Like, uh, I don't even have tickets to the Blink show was, when they come here. I need good. them so bad. I know. They're so expensive. It was good. I want to see him so bad. Yeah, Blink-182, uh, that was the first time the original members, Mark, Tom, and Travis, were on stage together since 2015 when Tom left the group. That uh, that was on Friday. They only announced that like the day before. So that was not a big buildup of here's Blink-182's you know, first performance with the original three members because mm-hmm. it was supposed to be on their tour, but their tour got delayed because Travis Barker, their drummer, like hurt his hand or something like that. But also, you have to think, and I think we've discussed this on the show before, Travis Barker is with a Jenner now, right? Yes. Courtney, or not a Jenner, a Kardashian. Kardashian. I'm thinking of the mom already because Chris Jenner, of course, the mom, I feel like Chris Jenner stepped in and said, Wait, where are you starting the Blink-182 World Tour? I don't think so. You're going to do it at Coachella. Mom has got this. I feel like Chris Jenner is just behind Blink-182 at Coachella. And, Bob, maybe the biggest news from Coachella. It appears that fans spotted Shawn Mendes and Camila Cabello kissing at Coachella. 
and they might be back together. They previously Coachella broke Love up. is real. They might be back together. Shaw Miller is back. Shaw Miller. <laughs> Joe Millie is back and love is real. Uh, the pair were spotted being cordial with a group of people before they were seen kissing in another video late oh, Friday thank, night. Thank you, baby Jesus. After the video came out, people on social media were freaking out, but mm. some had different reactions. One said, Shamila is back. Yes. Thank you, God. Someone was a little suspicious, though, saying someone's releasing new music soon. It's the same two-step every time, same formula, nothing new. All right. Oh, not this time. So somebody's not saying, this time. Somebody's saying Sean Mendes or Camila Cabello is going to have new music. Not and that's why time. that's oh, why no. they need to be. T no, you're, oh, no. You're, it's not about new music, Bob. Coachella love is real. Sean Miller? It's in the air. If, if the love starts at Coachella. It's a love that lasts forever, right? It's just the truth. Okay, it's the so, truth, Mike. Uh, looks like Sean Mendez and Camila Cabello, they might be back together, or one of them might have a new song coming out soon. Either way, they were kissing Sean at Coachella is back over the uh, weekend. All right. Penguins Facebook comments around 7.55. Love is Blind, Netflix reunion Facebook comments around 9.10 and also around 9.10. Your chance to win $1,000 as we continue to pay your bills here on 96.1 Kiss. It's Mikey and Bob. 96.1 Kiss. Taylor Swift, the Eras Tour, continued this weekend in Tampa, Florida for three shows. And the surprise songs on Thursday was Speak Now and Treacherous. On Friday, it was The Great War with uh, Aaron Dessner. And You're On Your Own, Kid. Ooh, you're On Your Own, Kid. That's, That's a good, good one. one. That's a good, good one there. And then Saturday, she did uh, Mad Woman with Aaron Dessner. And uh, Mean. Mean's a pretty good one, too, on uh, Saturday. So Taylor Swift has three shows in Houston this weekend. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday as the Eras Tour continues. Uh, if you want to win tickets to the Eras Tour here in Pittsburgh at Acrisure Stadium, you can enter on our website, 961kiss.com. Just go to the contest page. Um, this song, and I say song sort of in quotations because this is scary. There is an AI-generated Drake in the weekend song that has sort of been a thing on TikTok and uh, Twitter now. It was created with just AI technology, right. just artificial intelligence, not Drake, not The Weeknd, but the song sounds pretty good. It's pretty close. It is. Now, if you haven't heard this yet, this is going to scare you if you haven't heard this yet, because that's where we are with AI and technology. You can simply, you know, go to a website or use an AI generator and be like, I want a song with Drake in the weekend that sounds like a Drake in the weekend song. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is what you get. This is a Drake weekend song that is not Drake in the weekend at all. It's all AI. It's fake Drake is what it is. Right. Fake Drake in the weekend. So this is not them, but it's a song called Heart on My Sleeve. That, And again, the internet's going to be, it, it's already a hard place to navigate. Elon Musk isn't, make, isn't making it any better with uh, what he does on Twitter. Right. But something like this is going to confuse so many people. And this is only going to get worse well, before it gets got, better. It's got so much attention this week, and something like this is only going to cause like a million more of these. Oh, my made, gosh. You know? People are going to. Like last time I checked, it was over 5 million plays. How far away are we from having artists needing to come out and confirming whether it's right. actually them or not? Again, like official songs. I'm not going to play a lot of it. This is just a minute to show you how scary like AI and everything is getting, where you can simply say, okay, make me a Drake in the weekend song. And it sounds like this. I came in with my ex, like Celine, not a flex. Bumping just from me, what a fever. It left. She knows what she need. I need her. She blessed. Give it my best. Got my heart on my sleeve with a knife. My back was with that. Funny when I love him, then my brother, that's my shack. All right, again, this is fake Drake. That is not, not Drake yeah, rapping. Not, not this Drake. is AI rap right here. This is artificial intelligence. <laughs> that is not Drake at all. You know, and he drops a line about Selena Gomez yeah, there, yeah, Justin yeah. Bieber. That you mean to be it, so you know that it's gonna slap, eh? Yeah, it's gonna slap, eh? Yeah, Tell it back. Talking to a diva, yeah, she on my nerves. I mean, Drake does that in his songs, right? He'll go from that voice to that voice. This is, again, fake Drake. This is AI, not real Drake. She think that I need her, I take her to the car. All I know is 
Sounds right. like legit, like it's got a hook, it's got, you know, pop culture references. It sounds like Drake in the weekend did that. No, that's fake Drake in the fake end, the fake weekend uh, there. That's all artificial How many intelligence. Records people are just panicking, like, you know, full panic mode when this crap drops. I mean, look, millions of plays. Look and, how quick it was to turn Twitter upside down yeah, and not know, yeah. like, I. If you have a blue check mark right now, right. I don't even trust you anymore. Yeah. Like, Elon Musk did that in less than a year. How, like, what happens to the music industry when somebody can just type in, make a Drake Weekend song? Oh, this sounds pretty good. Put it out. It's got millions of views. And Drake in the Weekend, it's not even them. They have no idea what's going on at all. Again, it's called Heart on My Sleeve. It is completely AI generated, but a thing that's getting a lot of traction and also a lot of people just scared like, uh, how are we going to be able to tell the difference soon of what's real and what's fake? All right, coming up around 755, you know, the Penguins on Friday uh, cleaned some house, got rid of general manager Ron Hextall and some others. We will read Penguins Facebook comments around 755. Also, the Love is Blind live reunion had some technical difficulties on Netflix last night. We, we will read the uh, Facebook comments about that coming up around 910. It's Mikey and Bob. It's the 96.1 Kiss Morning Freak Show. Mikey and Bob, definitely colder today than it's been. I'm even wearing pants today. Highs just in the upper 40s and expect some afternoon showers after we had some really good weather this weekend. Well, it was a little rainy yesterday, but man, Friday and Saturday and just last week. Pretty nice. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty cold out there uh, today. All right, Bob, there's always weird things happening down in the state of Florida. It is time to get to another Florida story. Here we go. It's time to the Sunshine State. Yes, it happened again. It's another Florida story. A shirtless Florida man found uh, climbing tree like Tarzan after police chase. Of course he was. Florida headline here. Here's what happened. A 33-year-old Florida man was accused of speeding away from police during a traffic stop. A police helicopter eventually followed and found the vehicle uh, completely abandoned. Mm -hmm. A canine unit was called into the area to search for the Florida man, and they found him hiding up a large oak tree about two hours later. Uh, Body cam video showed officers telling the man to come down from the uh, big oak tree and warning him to not run away or they would send the canine named Draco after him. Oh, that's an intimidating name for a canine dog right there. Uh, Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, if you... If Yo, you, Cross Draco. If you name a canine dog like Barney, like nobody's scared of the canine police dog's training. Barney. It's true. If you name that dog Draco, like Draco is taking flesh. Like the, Draco is piercing the skin. Mm-hmm. Draco only knows how to bite. If you're bad, a bad person who's done wrong, and the police Draco tell Draco knows where to, to bite attack, too. Draco oh, knows yeah. where to bite. Oh yeah. Target regions. Barney the canine, though, doesn't all. Barney the canine just sucks your fingers. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this to a weird... Sucks your fingers! It's a sad old canine <laughs> named Barney. <laughs> just gumming you. Just with no teeth. Just loves getting kisses. Oh, just loves it. <laughs> you get you out of that tree. That dog ain't got no it, teeth. You'll be fine. He'll just lick you to death, okay? It's just Barney. He's our older one. Draco will get you, then Barney will come finish you off. All right. Wait, what are we doing here? Oh, there's a guy in a tree, right? Yeah. That's where we're at. This weird Florida story. Uh, The Florida man kept climbing the tree like Tarzan, Mm. as one officer described over his radio. This is going to end badly. He's literally in a tree right now trying to climb it like Tarzan. That was an officer describing it over his radio. Again, Florida man shirtless in a tree. Moments later, he was caught on camera. 
trying to literally swing from one branch to another. All right, floor Tarzan, man. It just work. Do you think this guy took his shirt off and then realized he climbed a tree and was like, how the hell do I get down from here? Yes, I know? got this. I got this. You got Draco and Barney, the, cane, the floor to canine, sitting down there waiting for you, and all of a sudden he's like, wait a minute. I'm shirtless. I kind of look like Tarzan. This guy is swinging from branch to branch like a floor to Tarzan. Um, he uh, eventually failed to swing to oh, a, a, no. a branch and thumped on the ground below. <laughs> he was subdued by the canine Draco and his uh, officer. Uh, nothing, about Bar nothing about Barney coming in? No, they don't put Barney in the police statements. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> they want they, they just they just put Draco out there, so you think you're getting uh, uh, a mean canine dog who knows what he's doing. They don't talk about Barney, who gives you actually a pleasurable experience. Who just he gives you some kisses. Barney likes wet sloppies. That's what he likes giving. All right, where are we at here? Oh yeah, so the guy fell out of the tree swinging like Tarzan shirtless. <laughs> he was hit with multiple charges. It is Florida making the show once again. All right, coming up next on the show, Penguins fire their general manager. Ron Hextall and some others. We will read Penguins Facebook comments around 7.55 on the Kiss Morning Free Show. It's Mikey and Bob. So, you blew all your money on spring break on margaritas. It's the 96.1 Kiss Morning Freak Show, Mikey and Bob. We want to continue to try to pay your bills here on 96.1 Kiss this week. Your first chance of the week to win $1,000 coming up around 9.10 on the Kiss Morning Freak Show. The Penguins made some moves. They fire general manager Ron Hextall. They fire president of Hockey Ops Brian Burke. They fire the assistant general manager Chris Pryor. Uh, they need a new front office going forward. Uh, the Penguins alternate governor Dave Beeston was asked about uh, Mario Lemieux's role with the team moving forward mm -hmm. when they had this press conference on Friday. And he said he is, of course, not only welcome, but wanted back whenever he wants. I expect that will be the case moving forward. Working with him and getting to know him through this process has been a special gift for me. He is incredible. So uh, Fenway Sports Group, they want Mario to be still a big part of the team. Bring him back in. Uh, the Penguins had their locker clean out day. Our guy Josh Yoey, who writes for The Athletic, did a great job sort of summarizing what some of the Penguins had to say. Uh, Brian Dumoulin said he wants to return to Pittsburgh, but he's an unrestricted free agent this summer. Is probably going to be gone. Tristan Jari, also going to be an unrestricted free agent if the Pens don't sign him. Uh, he said he wants to stay in Pittsburgh. He said also that he was dealing with multiple injuries all season long, and it impacted his play negatively. Right, right. Uh, Jason Zucker wants to be in Pittsburgh moving forward, but he said, it's not in my hands. Oh, he's gone. It's always in your hands. <laughs> like it's always, You tell your agent what you want. On. It's, I mean, he's going to cost a lot to keep. Uh, Sidney Crosby, of course, said that he's got two seasons left on his contract when they did locker clean out. Uh, talking about staying here his entire career in Pittsburgh. Sid said, I'd love to. That's been the case since day one. I feel really fortunate to have been drafted here and have great memories, so I'd love for that uh, to be the case. Joshua he also said it was sort of sad because sometimes Sid goes to Europe in the summer. Sometimes he goes to L.A. and mm -hmm. he's got properties in Nova Scotia and Montana. Uh, Joshua, he asked him. When Sid was leaving the locker room where he might be going, he said, don't know, not used to having this much time to fill. Oh, man, he is going to be. What a sad, uh, sad statement. Oh, he is going to be a hockey cyborg though, this I summer. You give Sidney Crosby too much time, watch out. Don't know where I'm going. Also, we don't know about Nick Benino, who had a uh, lacerated kidney that had him urinating blood, we uh, found out. So yum. Nick Benino came back, got hurt, didn't play much, but also uh, said four days after I got hurt, I was going into Giant Eagle to buy some soup, and a guy rolled down his window out of nowhere and was like, get better bones, I think. That's Pittsburgh. Uh, so don't know the status moving forward with the team with Nick Benino. But everything that happened, the Penguins sort of clean house with uh, upper management. Mm -hmm. The big headline was general manager Ron Hextall gets fired by the Penguins. And then we read the Facebook comments. Oh, 
we go. go into a there very deep, dark place uh, on the internet. Uh, yeah. Everyone is a GM. Yeah. Everyone is a coach. Yeah. Everyone is going to get traded. Yeah. Everything sucks. It's time for Penguins Facebook comments. These are Penguins Facebook comments after they clean house in uh, upper management, get rid of general manager Ron Hextall and some others. Tom G. Hextall is a flyer through and through. Destroyed a hated rival. Mission accomplished, Ronnie Hextall. Go back to Philly, you jag. And M, we need muscle and a goaltender who can stop the puck. Mike C, Steelers still have Tomlin. He hasn't won a playoff game lately either. Something's wrong. Been quite a few years since the Pens have missed the playoffs. Should have been Coach Sullivan that got fired up. Oh, damn! Can we retroactively get rid of Sully too? Like, poor Tomlin's just Tomlin's catching his right in. in there, man. What are you doing, Tomlin? Send him to the crossroads. And I'm going to miss Coach Sully. And I'm going to miss Coach Sully. Rick D in the Penguins Facebook comments. Once a Philly Jag, always a Philly Jag. Ron Burkle. Troy M. Burke is ass with a capital A. Glad to see that guy go. Tim R, see you later, clowns. Dave S, easiest decision ever. Richard H, best news I heard all day. Uh, Sam S, Merry Christmas. Carla M, now go get Flurry back. Chip C, good riddance. Bring back Mario. And Paul S, they actually really sent him to the crossroads. Oh, damn! There he goes. They really did it. General Manager Ron Hextall's gone. He's never coming back. Send him to the crossroads. He's never coming back. Our Hextall might bear his over. And I'm going to miss Ron Hextall. And I'm going to miss Ron Hextall. It's Mikey and Bob, the 961 Kiss Morning Free Show this week on the station. We continue to try to pay your bills 13 times a day for you to win $1,000. Uh, your first chance of the week coming up around 910. We'll give you a nationwide keyword to enter on our website, 961kiss.com. Pay your bills. Could win $1,000 around 910 this morning. All right, let's get to some of your messages here. You can send us messages when you're streaming our uh, station or our Mikey and Bob podcast through our free iHeartRadio. Hi, Mikey and Big Bob. This is Jamie from Wexford again. Hi. I just wanted to say I'm catching up on the podcast, and I was listening to Mikey fly solo. Uh, yeah, last week, Bob uh, Bob missed the show. He had some back issues uh -huh. he was dealing with, and I just did a show by myself. It was kind of weird, but I felt like I just had to do it. Great job, by the way, Mikey. But, Bobby, boy, did I ever miss you and that laugh yeah. and all your little quips. Mm -hmm. And I did want to say one more thing. I still stay by it. Mikey's not a standing wiper. Okay, I mean, did we need the Century 3 <laughs> jingle there? Yes, even, even, though, even though she's defending me and I saying I'm where... not a standing wiper, yeah, I did not Century expect that. Century 3 jingle? Mikey's not a standing <laughs> wiper. All right, let's get to another <laughs> message uh, here. What's up, guys? <laughs> Joe the Trucker, South Carolina. All right, we're going down to South Carolina okay, now. Joe right. the Trucker listens on the iHeartRadio app down in South Carolina. Let's see what he's got. I just want to check in with a little song for you. Oh, okay. He's got a song for us, Bob. Here we go. Huh. Freak show. Hey, nice. Here we go. Yeah. Mikey stands and wipes at the toilet bowl. <laughs> here we go. You know what? Get out of here. <laughs> here we no, go. No, don't. Don't clap for that. You shouldn't be clapping for so that good. in South Carolina. Here no, we go. not again, man. Freak show. Not again. Here, Here we go. go. Mikey stands and wipes at the toilet bowl. Oh, here, here we go. go. What's wrong with all of you? So good. It's not so it good. It is. All right, one more message here. Hey there, Bean Burrito, Mikey, and Mexican Pizza Bob, Doug in D.C. And oh, wow, Doug in D.C. All right, got we're all over. Listening to the show all yeah. over the country, yeah. Mikey, yeah, I know you mentioned Reese's Outrageous, one of your favorite candy bars. And all right, you must be catching up on an older show because, yeah, one of my favorite candy bars is the uh, Reese's Nutrageous Bar. Right, right. Love that candy bar. It's got like the it's got like the three or four best things about candy bars all packed on. Oh, such a good candy bar. I'm sorry for the words, guys, but holy nobody. Oh, that candy bar is fantastic. Yeah. And Mikey, I bet that wrapper is so great. Yeah. What? To use while you stand in white. Oh my god! <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs>
Doggy DC! You use the rapper? Everybody does! You use the rapper to why? No, you can't build me up with content and be like, hey, that candy bar you like? I like that too. Yeah, do, you, yeah. do you stand to wipe your butt with the candy wrapper? <laughs> Doug and DC, come on. Get out, rap, of, here, huh? get out of here. Uh, there is a strike that could be happening at PNC Park that could affect you if you're going to Pirates games. We'll get you the info on that. Also, Dollar Hot Dog Night went bad at the Phillies game. We will get you the details on that, too. And around 9-10, we read the Facebook comments about the botched Love is Blind live reunion on Netflix last night. That'll be coming up around 9-10. It's Mikey Bob, the Kiss Morning Freak Show. 96.1 Kiss. The Taylor Swift Eras Tour will be going to Houston next after three shows in Tampa on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the Eras Tour will be in Houston. If you want to go to uh, one of the shows at Acrisure Stadium here in Pittsburgh, you can still enter for Taylor tickets up on our website, 961kiss.com. Just click on the uh, contest page. The Pirates split their series against the Cardinals in St. Louis. Uh, yesterday, they lose 5-4 to four in 10 innings on Sunday. Pirates now 9-7 and seven on the year, though. Uh, not too bad. Not bad. Uh, I start here for the uh, Pirates. Pirates are at Colorado taking on the Rockies, starting that series. He's an 840 uh, start in uh, Colorado for the Buccos tonight. Also, there is a strike coming to PNC Park. Stadium ushers, ticket takers, and ticket sellers at PNC Park have announced they're going on strike. The Pittsburgh Stadium Independent Employees uh, Union announced it yesterday that the Pirates' latest contract offer was rejected and that a strike vote was accepted. Workers will pick it outside of the Pirates' next home game coming up on Thursday. The Pirates' statement said we're disappointed they did not ratify the proposed agreement. It would be extremely disappointing if members of the union would choose to strike under these circumstances. We are hopeful that they will be able to ratify an agreement soon. It's unclear if the Pirates and union members will be negotiating ahead of Thursday's planned uh, picketing. But yes, the uh, ushers, the ticket takers, the workers at PNC Park uh, apparently looking for more money in a new deal uh, going on strike. Like, I'm not saying to do this, but if there's no ticket ushers there, isn't it pretty much just pick a seat then? I I mean, I think it's usually pick a seat, honestly. No, I mean, like, legit, like, pick unless a seat. It's, unless it's, like, a Friday or Saturday night firework night, I, I'm pretty sure it's usually pick a seat at PNC just Park saying, anyway. Just saying. Let's go over to Philly. We have to talk about what happened at this Phillies game. The Phillies had a dollar dog night. That's happened before, right? right, right. Not a new thing. Yep. Uh, but things went bad in Section 112 <laughs> when a hot dog eating contest started. <laughs> Uh, somebody said this kid was eating a bunch of hot dogs. He had 13, and people were trying to get him to eat more, like eat another one, eat another one. So they started throwing hot dogs at him. A security guard came over and started yelling, and then it just went nuts. Hot dogs were flying across the ballpark. <laughs> people were throwing them from the upper deck down to Section 112, hot where this kid rain. was eating uh, hot dogs. Uh, yes, uh, they were being thrown close enough to where some of them even made it onto the field. Um, it just turned into a big food fight. Then water bottles started being thrown. The Phillies had to release a statement saying, unfortunately, the small minority of people involved in this situation put our regular fan base in a negative light. So the <laughs> Phillies dollar hot dog night turned into a big food fight with fans getting ejected. Now, that. That's kind of funny, right? It is. But you know damn well, if you've been listening to the show long enough, if we're mentioning the Philadelphia Phillies and hot dogs, we have to play the all-time clip of when the Philly fanatic yes. shot a hot dog and hit a lady in the face. The green mascot shot a free meal high into the stands with his iconic cannon. All right, we have flying meat. That's where we're sure, at. Flying yeah. meat. Hitting a Montgomery County woman square in the face. Oh, no. Oh. A flying meat to the face. This is not what Kathy McVeigh wanted to be known for. Are we about to get the interview of the lady who was hit by the Philly fanatic's flying meat? Yes. Wow. She got hit right between the eyes. I <laughs> right between the eyes. Taking flying meat right Correct between it. the eyes. By man. a hot dog fired from Whoa. the Fanatics hot dog cannon. Whoa. The injury's bad enough she got sent to the emergency room. Had to go to the ER because she was hit with <laughs> the furry mascot's flying meat. Now she has a message for other Phillies fans. Okay. Oh my gosh, I never thought a hot dog would, could hurt. <laughs> Kathy McVeigh did oh get God. hurt and by a hot dog. The lady legit had a bruised up face. <laughs> she like did. she really did have bruises. It just came out of nowhere. It was like and I, hard. I, and hard, yeah. And we need to tell us. 
that the flying wiener was hard? Did we need to ask the lady? We see the bruises. Hard? It was hard. It was hard, yes. <laughs> the, the wiener was hard? The wiener was hard. Yes. Okay, fade into the camera now. <laughs> I got hit between the eyes with a hard wiener. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what you are experiencing right now on our radio show is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity where we get to say the phrase, I got hit between the eyes with a hard wiener. The Fanatics hot dogs are wrapped in duct tape. They come wrapped so you don't have, like, exploding uh, exploding wieners coming out of the cannon. Can you imagine that? Explode I got goodness. hit between the eyes with an exploding wiener. <laughs> Moving up. And then next thing I know, damn, it like hit me like a, a ton of bricks. It hit me like a hard wiener. <laughs> hard wiener. And damn, bam, it hit me like a hard wiener <laughs> right between the eyes. It's sore. It's very sore. Yeah, it's sore. I mean, you would be sore if you got hit in the face by a flying wiener. I'm talking. Oh, damn. damn. <laughs> Sitting at the Phillies game, oh, cheering man. on my favorite baseball team. And oh, all of a sudden, man. the Philly fanatic Ooh. starts shooting those wieners. Oh. Oh, I got hit between the eyes! Oh, damn. With a flying hard wiener! I didn't even see it coming. I wasn't paying attention! Hell no. I was playing on my phone! And poof! I got hit with a hard flying wiener! Hard flying wiener. <laughs> right between the eyes! All bruised up! Had to go to the emergency room! Oh, damn! damn. Flying Wiener. Oh, yeah. Shot by a big furry green mascot. Fanatic Flying Wiener, y'all. <laughs> it smacked me right between the eyes. It was hard. It was hard. Flying Hard Wiener. Damn right. Pay attention when there's Flying Hard Wieners. Keep your eye on the hard wiener. Keep your eye on the ball? Oh, no, girl. Uh oh, hell no. At the game, you need to keep your eye on the wiener. <laughs> 96 line kiss. The Mikey and Bob podcast. It's like a Vegas show, but not really, right? Weird Vegas, yeah. <laughs> not like Vegas at all, actually. Stream the Mikey and Bob podcast on iHeartRadio or wherever you get your podcasts. Get go. Mikey and Bob, it's the 96 One Kiss Morning Freak Show. A lot colder today than it's uh, obviously been when we, you know, it hit temperatures a couple days ago in the 80s. Uh, highs in the upper 40s, low 50s today. Still wearing shorts. Yeah, with some afternoon showers uh, to be expected, too. All right, let's get to this. We're all going to learn something together right now. It's time to find out. Why the hell is this trending with Mikey and Bad? Uh, Frank Ocean is trending because he was the headliner uh, for the Sunday night last night at Coachella. Uh, for this Coachella weekend, Frank Ocean, though, trending not really because of his songs and the guests that he brought out because there was no live stream for it. Like some artists are just like, no, we're not live streaming this. And, yeah. uh, so if you stayed up for Frank Ocean last night and we're looking forward to it, you have to find, like, some bootleg or just go on TikTok where everybody was, you know, posting clips and things. because it's about as good as you're going to get. Yeah, it was not live streamed. Also, a lot of things trending regarding the NBA playoffs. Man, I watched a ton of basketball this weekend. So many good games. So many great storylines. I love the NBA playoffs. I do not care about the NHL playoffs, though. They Neither start tonight, I. right? Yeah, they do. Could care less. I know. The cup. I know. Like, I don't know. Give it give it to – I always – if the Penguins are out of it, I'm always just like, I don't know, give it to a Canadian team or something. But then you're just like, but not the Maple Leafs, <laughs> right? <laughs> Anybody but like, those Maple Leafs. I mean, let Edmonton win or something, right? I, no, don't, I don't care. care. I don't care at all. Let the Florida Panthers the Penguins are out of it. like, oh, my, see ya. Um, also, Succession trending because, again, one of the biggest shows on TV. That's the HBO show on uh, on Sunday night. Succession. By the way, are you finally caught up with Succession? Did you watch last week's episode, episode three? Yeah, I didn't get last oh. night in. I didn't get last night in yet. Man. 
so. How about that episode three, yeah, though, huh? Great. It was great. Taking a big good. swing in the final season. It's as good as it gets. It's as good as it gets. That's a great it hour is. of television, it isn't is. it? So it Succession is. was on last night. Also trending, Barry. Ever watch Barry on HBO with Bill Hader? I've seen it before. I Great show, I didn't dive too. in. I yeah, didn't dive the, in. The final season of Barry is uh, also out now. That started on uh, HBO last night. The uh, the season premiere of Barry as its final season is airing now on uh, HBO. All right. Coming up around 9-10, not only will we have you a chance to win $1,000 as we continue to pay your bills, but... Last night, Netflix tried to do a live reunion for their dating show, Love is Blind. It did not go well at all. The stream was not working. Netflix was crashing. It was like nothing I've ever seen before. So we will read Love is Blind live reunion Facebook comments around 9, 10 on the Kiss Morning Free Show. It's Mikey and Bob. 96 on Kiss. The Mikey and Bob podcast. It's Mikey, it's Bob, the 96.1 Kiss Morning Freak Show. You can send us messages through our free iHeartRadio app if you listen to the uh, show live or if you're a Mikey and Bob podcast listener. Uh, earlier this morning, we once again uh, played our Facebook comment segment as Tupperware, the uh, the plastic container company, might be going out of business. The Tupperware Facebook comments yeah. uh, from Friday's show, and we replayed them earlier today. It might be my favorite round of Facebook comments for the uh, entire year. Hey, Mikey. Hey, Bob. It's Tennille from Wintersville, Ohio. Yeah. I just got done listening to Fat Pat's Wiggle Wand <laughs> episode. That was a good one. Oh, my God. The yeah. Facebook comments are so hilarious. Just, oh, my God. Couldn't stop laughing when he sent Fat <laughs> Pat to the crossroads <laughs> three times. Yeah. Oh, that's special. Good job, guys. Yeah, it's up on the podcast if you missed uh, maybe the greatest round of Facebook comments of the year. Tupperware uh, Facebook comments after they might be going out of business. Uh, Super Mario Brothers, once again, massive weekend at the movies, making $87 million in its second weekend of release. Uh, ticket sales down just 41% from its uh, debut weekend. It is now the second, uh, the best ever second weekend for an animated film in history. So it now has the biggest opening weekend ever for an animated film and the second best weekend of an animated film. Uh, Super Mario Brothers has done about $350 million in North America and $680 million globally now. Again, this is going to unlock that whole universe. It is. The whole Nintendo coming. universe yep. is all coming. More Mario Brothers movies and other Nintendo properties like... The Marvel Cinematic Universe, the DC Comics, those are things. The Nintendoverse is about to be a uh, thing, too. Um, Also, Bob, I know a lot of reality show fans are looking forward to uh, this season's Vanderpump Rules um, reunion when that airs. Because obviously there was this big cheating scandal that happened this year on Vanderpump Rules. Uh, The uh, 28-year-old. Uh, Raquel Levis, who is on that show, has entered a mental health treatment center in Arizona. She is the one who had the months-long uh, affair with uh, Tom Sandoval, her co-star on Vanderpump Rules. Her rep told People Raquel and her family decided before the relationship was discovered that she would enter a voluntary facility for mental health counseling. Before this, it all blew up? Yeah, before this weird, became yeah. public, she already wanted to go oh, into okay. I guess, though, if you cheat with somebody like if you are the person like there are a people who are in a loving relationship well maybe not so loving and you are the person who cheats right yeah, you are the yeah, person yeah. who breaks that up like you're the other woman right i guess that would probably be mentally taxing on you knowing that you sort of broke up a relationship but also if the relationship wasn't strong enough to not be cheated on it was probably going to fail anyway but hard to have sympathy for somebody who was the person that cheated. right yeah. uh but it says she was scheduled to go in before the reunion, but decided she wanted to finish her filming commitment. Bravo and production were aware and supported her journey towards better mental health. But now, wait a minute. And I, I'm not trying to come down on her for checking in to a facility and, and taking care of her own mental health. 
but it seems like she shouldn't have been part of this reunion because if you already know like things are bad, I'm part of this cheating scandal, this big love triangle right. that is just elevate is the biggest scandal in Vanderpump Rules history. Everybody's like, paying attention to this yeah. thing. Yeah, I don't even watch the show, and I want to watch this right. reunion just because of the fireworks and the uh, people involved. But I just don't get like. And again, Why throw yourself into that situation? Her rep said it's not substance abuse or anything like that. It just says she wants to be. Uh, Easy why? She wants to check, get checked out for mental health and trauma therapy. But what I'm saying is, like, before the reunion stuff, when these things are bad, that's when you're going to check yourself into a. Men- but you finish the taping and stuff. It feels like you shouldn't have went to the taping if the reason why you're checking yourself in is bad mental health and probably has to do with this cheating and she's the other woman and everybody doesn't was, like her now. All this it stuff. was one of those things where I'm going to get this check and then I'll deal with the mental health stuff later. Like, yeah, that's what it is. Just like, this is going to be the be? biggest check. Yeah, I have to be yeah, part yeah. of this reunion and then I'll work on my like, mental Keep my name in the headlines here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So again, they don't know when the uh, they don't have a date for when that Vanderpump uh, Rules reunion is going to happen. But I guess I, you know, give some props to Raquel if she's going through something to at least have the uh, wherewithal to check herself into a uh, mental uh, health facility. Yeah. All right. Uh, speaking of reality shows and reunions, what happened last night on Netflix? Netflix's biggest uh, dating reality show is called Love Is Blind. They were trying to do a live reunion last night, and they had some technical problems. They couldn't get the stream to work. Everybody was upset. Everybody was angry. We read the Love is Blind reunion Netflix Facebook comments next on the Kiss Morning Freak Show, and you're shot to win $1,000 next. It's Mikey and Bob. It is Mikey and it's Bob, the 96.1 Kiss Morning Freak Show. In just a couple minutes here, we give you that nationwide keyword. You simply have to enter it on our website, 961kiss.com. We want to try to pay your bills. You could win $1,000 next here on the Kiss Morning Freak Show. What happened with the Love is Blind live reunion that was supposed to be on Netflix? Uh, It was delayed on Sunday night due to technical difficulties. It seemed like a lot of people were trying to stream it. Netflix, of course, does not do a lot of live programming, but they're starting to dip their toe into that water. The live reunion uh, special for the dating show Love is Blind had major delays. There was an error message. I think at one point Netflix just uh, tweeted out just like, hey, listen. It's going to be taped anyway. It'll be up on, you know. Right. If you stayed up late to watch it live, sure, whatever. At one point, they called it off because people were just sitting around waiting. Yeah. And as they're waiting, the Internet got better and better with it. Right. Yeah. The memes memes were great and everything like that. I I don't watch Love is Blind, but I even had to turn on because I'm like, wait, something broke Netflix? (laughs) What is this? Yeah. Uh, And then we read the Facebook comments. Here we go. We are going to a very deep, dark place on the Internet. It's time for 96 one kiss facebook comments these are facebook comments after the netflix live broadcast of the love is blind reunion was delayed over technical difficulties lacey l i feel like i'm trying to buy damn taylor swift tickets all over again come on netflix (laughs) stacy w currently friendless after blaming all of my friends and family to get off my Netflix account because I thought they were the problem. All right, yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> Tiffany B., next time Netflix tried to, to uh, charge my debit card, I'm going to send them a message saying, hang tight, I'm trying to fix it as soon as possible. <laughs> uh, Michael L. here, I'm just here for the comments while my wife is currently screaming at the TV. Carmen F., the pregnant woman who planned her bathroom breaks accordingly is getting real angry tonight, Netflix. It's me. I'm the pregnant woman. <laughs> and then a little bit later, she wrote, update, I've gone to the bathroom twice now, and Netflix still hasn't given us any indication that this show's going to be on anytime soon. So people were angry at the Netflix live broadcast of the Love is Blind reunion that was delayed because of technical difficulties. Uh, let's read some more Facebook comments here. Sabrina D., is it because I'm using my uncle's girlfriend's best friend Netflix account? Is that why I can't watch this? <laughs> James C. Love must be truly blind because I can't see the damn show. Kelly W., you're killing me, Netflix. It's now 820, and I already ate my snacks. What are you doing? Oh, man. <laughs> the snacks, snacks are gone. That's, that's bad. When you plan out your show-watching snacks, you don't plan for a 20-minute, half-hour delay. You owe snacks, Netflix. <laughs> You owe snacks. Jennifer S., come on, Netflix. I have my children all bathed and ready for bed early. 
and I kicked everyone out in the living room trying to watch this show I've been anticipating. Get it together, Netflix! And we'll end with one more here. These are Netflix Facebook comments after the Love is Blind live reunion special has some technical difficulties. Aaron M., I pay Netflix to be able to stream everything at once when I want to. If I wanted live TV and weekly releases, I'd still have cable. You hear me, Netflix? And now you can't even do live streaming right? You know what? I'm about done with the flicks. Oh, wait. She just called Netflix the flicks. The flicks? She's about to... Oh, damn! Send Netflix to the crossroads! The flicks is gone! If you can't do Love is Blind Live Reunion, I'm out. I'm done with you, the flicks! <laughs> and I'm gonna miss the flicks! And I'm gonna miss the flicks! Uh, Mike him up. It is the 96 1 Kiss Morning Freak Show. Colder out there than it's been today. Some afternoon showers expected in the area. Highs just hitting the upper 40s, uh, low 50s. Oh, by the way, today is the uh, first day of uh, Mark Consuelos, right, as host of Live with Kelly and Ryan, which is no more. Because Ryan Seacrest's last show with uh, Live with Kelly and Ryan was on Friday, which, by the way, some people were mad because they taped it. (laughs) Wasn't actually live. How don't you do the last show live? Weird, right? Maybe they had a lot of working parts and things. So, yes, Kelly Ripa and her husband, Mark Consuelos, now it is officially live with uh, Kelly and Mark uh, starting this morning. All right, let's get to a message here. You can send us messages through our free iHeartRadio app when you're streaming the station or our Mikey and Bob podcast. Just hit the talk back microphone. Hey, Mikey and Big Bob. This is Teddy from Hopewell. Hi. First time caller. Um, I was kind of wondering if you guys can share how your friendship started and how long you've been friends for. Um, Bob, what's it like to be friends with a standing wiper? I mean, <laughs> have a good day. Such a nice message. You, you, you know, we talk about we talk about us being best friends, and you know, since Little League baseball, and then you just have to ask. Does Bob, she even care? Does she even is, care about the story? I don't know. It's, I think it was all just a setup. No, he was standing wiper. Does she not care? I felt like she cared. She made me believe that she cared, and then she just asked, "What's it like to be friends with a like, standing wiper?" Yeah, we wiper. started playing Little League baseball together. I mean, that's that's legit where it started, though, for me and Bob. We've been best friends for most of our life. Went to middle school, high school together. I think Little League Baseball is where our friendship started, though, because me and you went to different elementary schools yeah, yeah, yeah. in our city. Yep. So we did not go to, like, kindergarten or anything together. No. We were in, like, the same fourth grade class. But then when we started playing, like, Little League Baseball, we were put on the same team. Yes. I remember we were on a team called the Jets. Not sure why we weren't just using baseball team names, but we were on the Jets. And that's when I think we first, I wouldn't say became like best friends, because we were not best friends instantly. It was something that grew over time. But I think us knowing of each other, knowing that you existed in the same city as me, and you were a pretty cool kid. I think that started with Little League Baseball. Now, do you remember, though, Bob, when we started becoming better friends towards, like, junior high school when both of our elementary schools combined and then we would go to junior high with all the kids together, you know, half the kids we didn't even go to elementary school with? Do you remember when we started hanging out? Do you remember the first time you ever came over to hang out at my house? No. Okay. I have no clue. I remember the first time I ever came over to your house. It still stains me to this day. Because you were the friend that knew how to uh, navigate the early internet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so do you already know? No, I have no clue where this is going, okay, but I so can only imagine. I had never seen the Tupac Shakur autopsy photo until I went to your house. <laughs> so the first time I ever, as you know, and this is probably when me and you are in sixth grade, right. I would think. I go over to your house, the first time I'm hanging out with a new kid. Right? He lives a he lives like I would you live like half a mile away maybe or something maybe. like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So I go over to his house and one of the things he shows me is, Hey, have you ever seen the pic the autopsy picture of Tupac Shakur? <laughs> no, I haven't. Well you're gonna see it today. That's what locked down this friendship. <laughs> It is weird that our friendship may have never been what it is today if you never showed me 
a picture of dead Tupac Shakur on the early internet. Us as kids trying to just find the weirdest thing on the internet. We Thank you, Pac. Thank you, Pac. Yeah, Tupac. It's really, the show is built around, unfortunately, the passing of Tupac, but that our friendship might never be what it is true, today. True. And somehow this 20-year running morning radio show in Pittsburgh if you never showed me the Tupac picture. <laughs> so, you blew all your money on spring break. Six one Kiss Morning Freak Show, Mikey and Bob. Again, we have a chance this hour for you to try to win a thousand dollars. We continue to pay your bills uh, this week here on the station. Thirteen chances a day, ten after every hour. Now through nine p.m. But again, your nine a.m. keyword to enter at nine six one Kiss dot com is money M O N E Y. Enter that nationwide keyword money at nine six one Kiss dot com, and you could win a thousand dollars. All right, wonderful listener to the show. I think she listens to the podcast a lot. Uh, Rebecca, we call her the laughing lady, sent us a message. Good morning, Yens. Happy Monday. It's laughing lady Rebecca here. Yep. I started watching 80 for Brady trying to wind down and uh, I started laughing so hard and I thought about you guys and I just want to say thank you so much okay. um, for naming me that because my ex hated my life. Hated it. Oh, come and, on. Um, I love you guys. Pittsburgh loves you. Yeah. And you just all make us always feel so good about ourselves. Okay, so she's watching 80 for Brady on demand, laughing too hard, and uh, you know what laugh I'm talking about, right, Bob? You know Rebecca the Laughing Lady? I think because so. Yeah. She is starting to, get her, she's starting to get her own laugh compilation. Here is what she sounds like. <laughs> I have to say it. <laughs> <laughs> We have a compilation of Bob's greatest laps of all time, too. <laughs> all right. Yeah. seem to go away as we all just laugh at Bob's great laugh. I like this new character of Bob says something into his coffee cup while taking a drink of coffee. I go back. Stream the Mikey and Bob podcast on iHeartRadio or wherever you get your podcasts. It's your buddies, Mikey and Bob. It is Mikey, it is Bob, the 96.1 Kiss Morning Freak Show. These movie trailers gotta calm down, man. Movie what? Scary movie trailers. Hey, spooky movies? Yeah, I'm watching basketball over the weekend, and there's this movie coming out. I think it's called, like, Evil Dead Rising or something. Okay. And somebody looks through the keyhole in the trailer, and there's, like, this nightmarish lady demon creature on the other side. I don't even remember what she says, because I, like, black out during the trailer <laughs> but she says something in a really creepy voice and i'm like it white i'm just trying to watch some basketball here and you gotta like, try to enjoy your day like we put warnings on everything now you know why don't we have a warning for spooky movie trailers because rated s for spooky yeah rated s for spooky, it's coming man. watch out spooky's because, coming uh, you know sometimes when a show or a movie starts it'll be like hey you know if you're prone to seizures there's gonna be some flashing lights there sure i feel like i need a spooky movie warning trailer rated s for spooky because 
in this country, man, like we we can't well we can't swear on TV, can't show a woman's nipple on TV or something like that. But we can show these spooky ass movie trailers. <laughs> Yo, there's some sketch. What's that one movie with the you Russell Crowe? You're telling me I can't see a nipple. That Russell- and I'm over here getting spooked. There's a Russell Crowe movie. <laughs> Uh, called The Pope's Exorcist. Okay. Yo, did you see the trailer for that? No. That's creepy. No, I didn't. Like, they're showing you the creepy creatures in the trailer. Like, just give me... Show me nipples. No, I don't... <laughs> it's not that... Spooky nipples. All right, I don't want... An SN warning at the beginning of it. <laughs> What's your little key peephole and all of a sudden spooky nipples? All right, can you just... <laughs> and swear words, too. Yes. The nipples talk. They only swear, though. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. I just... Spooky movie trailers just have no warning, and then they come on in the middle of the afternoon when you're trying to watch something, and he's like, <laughs> The Pope's Exorcist. <laughs> I don't want to see this trailer. And they show spooky parts, and they don't show spooky parts. Like, lead me up to the jump scare. Don't jump scare me in the trailer. Spooky movie trailers. Spooky nipples. <laughs> I need all my movie trailers. <laughs> Rated SN for spooky nipples. All right. Um, 12 more chances for you throughout the day to try to win $1,000. We continue to try to pay your bills. Uh, Your next chance will be coming up with the nationwide keyword that you enter on our website in about 10 minutes during the Ryan Seacrest show. By the way, what's Seacrest doing now? Because Kelly Ripa, of course, her husband, Mark Consuelos, now is on live with Kelly and Mark because it was Ryan Seacrest's last day on Friday. Right. Seacrest got all this extra time now. Like, I know he's still doing American Idol and he's still doing his radio show, but... Seacrest got something else he's like working on or something like that, or hey, maybe Seacrest, man. Maybe he's just like instead of having fifteen jobs, he's ever just stops. fourteen. Okay, yeah. uh, so the uh, wonderful robot of a man, Ryan Seacrest, will be coming up next. Oh, what do you want to name the podcast, Bob? Before we get out of here, Love is a Shirtless Florida Tarzan. <laughs> yes. Love is a shirtless Florida Tarzan. If you missed uh, part of the show today where we read the uh, Facebook comments about the Netflix live broadcast difficulties of Love is Blind, that reunion last night, that's up on our Mikey and Bob podcast. You can get it on our free iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcast. That's it for us. Ryan Seacrest, show us up. Bye. Let's go. Yeah, tomorrow morning.